Hello everybody, I'm back and I just want to tell you that I have done this video three times because the first time the phone rings, the second time the other phone rings, the third time the fucking doorbell goes. Look, when it's tea time with Buff been stuffed and I'm filming, do not ring my bell. I am warning you, do not ring my bell. Because I swear to God, the next person that does that when I'm doing a video, I'm going to fucking chase them down my road and beat them like a piñata. I swear to God. Anyways, that's my rant done for now. I was reading some news. I was reading some rants. I was reading some rumors. I was reading a lot online about Randy Orton lately. And it, it seems to be that for the last few weeks, there have been reports surfacing that he is not happy with the way he's been used. He's very unhappy that he's not being used as the top guy. He's very unhappy that he's the setup guy. He's unhappy that he's going to face the loser of the Ambrose Cena match. He's not in a more marquee match. He's not happy with his current role. He's not happy with the way Creative have used him. He wants time off. Uh, and like AMC Movie Talk, I'm going to steal one of their concepts. And I openly will steal it. And I'll openly own up to it. Do I buy or sell that news? I would buy that news because I've heard it from very reliable sources, like Dave Meltzer. I've seen it around enough for me to think that there may be something to that. And here is why I think Randy Orton is in the spot that he is in. This is just the way I see it. Other people may see it differently, uh, but the way I see it is like this. Let me ask all of you a few questions, and this is going to lead into what I feel. Give me two minutes. Right, here's my question. Since 2008, what has changed about Randy Orton? In 2007, he was this pretty boy heel with the you know wonderfully spiky hair and that boy band music and uh, you know statuette pose and all of that you know the pose and all of that nonsense. He was the legend killer. Then he changed and he shaved his head and he became a lot more calculating. He was more like a predator, like a, an assassin. And that was a good call cool change to the character. He started to get very, very over to the point where he turned himself babyface. Uh, and he resented doing that. But did anything change? In 2008, when he came back from his collarbone injury, what changed? Other than the fact that he had two boys to carry his bags for him in Ted DiBiase and Cody Rose what changed nothing in 2009 what changed when he was the top guy nothing in 2010 when he turned babyface what changed nothing in 2011 while he was still a babyface what changed nothing other than the fact that he had a bit of a fuzzy beard in 2012 i ask you one more time what changed nothing in 2013 when you've got acts like the Wyatt family coming up you've got acts like the shield coming up you've got CM Punk who was on fire that year you know the, the year-long run as champion you've got him on the rise you've got returning stars like Brock Lesnar and The Rock in all of that what changed with Randy Orton nothing and what was the big thing that everyone was saying that year well randy as a baby face doesn't work which i would agree with because i don't think he's an actual baby face i think he resents being a baby face and it shows when he's out there but everyone was saying when randy turns heel oh man i tell you right now man business picks right back up randy becomes a heel oh god damn randy turns heel in 2013 on daniel bryan wins the money in the bank is a heel, sells out to the authority, you know, sells out to the authority, is their guy. I ask you one more time, what changed other than the fact that he turned heel? During that entire time, Randy Orton, to me, you may as well, and this is of no knock of him because he actually does have talent, he's a good athlete, he's a good looking guy, good look, good build, he's all the things that they love. But as a viewer, I was completely uninterested in Randy Orton during that authority storyline. You may as well have taken a replica WWE belt, got a cardboard cut out of Randy Orton and stuck it on the shoulder and just sold that to me. Because there was no difference between a cardboard cut out of him and the real person on television. Nothing. 
nothing changed. No new promo skills, no new phrases, no new moves, no new look. He looked exactly the same. The character of Randy Orton is stale. The character of Randy Orton is stagnant. The character of Randy Orton has not evolved. Something that they were very big on with him. You know, evolution of Randy Orton's a very big thing in that company. He hasn't evolved. This is the guy that was handpicked to be the next big star. Yet when you look throughout the years, nothing has really changed. Nothing has really changed. And I can understand why Cena is the top guy. There was an interview by Ted DiBiase, and he even said in an interview way back about Randy Orton and Cena, and that Randy was cussing out, oh, why is John getting the spot? Why am I not in the spot? And this leads to the other point I want to make, I want to touch on. John Cena ain't about no drama. Randy Orton is. There's always something going on with him. If he's not having outbursts on Twitter, he's breaking character on television. He had that temper tantrum when he wrestled Kofi King Kingston. He had that temper tantrum when he was in there with Kennedy. He's had many a temper tantrum online or unprofessional temper tantrums. Wrecking hotel rooms, doing poos in divas bags. He's got all of these things and I can imagine if you're a promoter, from a promoter's point of view, while you know how talented this guy is, you can never really go all the way with him because the guy's a walking PR disaster. He really is a walking PR disaster. And if my memory serves me right, he got suspended about, about two years ago maybe. And I think that that was one of the final nails in the coffin and why they can't go all the way with him. They will only go to a certain level with him. And in that respect, Randy is his own worst enemy. But going back onto the character evolution of Randy Orton, no, he's not evolved. He's not evolved. His promos are pretty basic. He comes out, he smirks to the corner, he still does that pose, doesn't say much. He's not here to be a nice guy. He's the face of the company. He's here to be WWE champion. He'll smile when he's angry. Yeah, nobody steals from me. He'll do that. The match starts, he locks up, throws you down, hip toss, uh, shoulder tackle, does the pose the stamps, does the knee drop, neck breaker, scoop slam, splices out on the floor, hits the ground like a child who hasn't had his sweets before dinner, and then does the RKO. It's been the same match for the last god knows how many years. Nothing has changed, nothing has evolved. And in the times where we have guys like Dean Ambrose, who's a new face, who has charisma, who has swagger, who has great promo skills that we haven't really seen just yet. When you see someone like Seth Rollins, who's a new face with a very unique style that kind of is very interesting and appealing to watch. When you have a guy like a Bray Wyatt who looks completely different to anything else on the main roster and has a unique promo style. When you have guys like that on the rise and then obviously their handpicked chosen one, Roman Reigns, I can see fans gravitating towards those guys because they are new and they are unique and they are fresh and the characters are evolving bit by bit as opposed to a Randy Orton. That's what I feel. And for all those people that are going to say to me, well, 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 lots of characters don't evolve, blah, 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 Randy Orton, so great, blah, 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 blah. Evolution is necessary in that kind of spectator sport based business. And if you look at some of the main eventers in the world, they've evolved in some way, shape or form, added something new to their character. Let me give you an example. Steve Austin. Some people are going to say that Steve Austin essentially played the same character, but I would debate that he didn't because when he did, when he was a baby face, he was one way. When he turned heel with Vince McMahon, you know, Grotty, what will you think about that? And how much we hate that? The character changed. He became a bit more of an ass kiss, kick, kisser. He was more of a coward. He added more of these other traits to his personality. We even had the what catchphrase. All of that. When he turned again and was in the Alliance, the character became quite comical almost. But there were some fresh things in that year with that character, despite what you think of his ill turn. Kurt Angle, another example of a guy that changed and evolved throughout the times. When Kurt was brought in, he was... Uh, an Olympic gold medalist, he was a self-righteous dork, he would come out and was a complete pansy almost, even though he was an Olympic gold medal wrestler. Then the character developed a more serious edge uh, and developed more of a mean streak. Then we have him shaving his headboard, even a little thing like shaving his headboard, it adds something to the character and he was even more comical. Then he developed an even more serious edge. 
and then he was the GM. He had all these character changes to the point where he was almost like based on an MMA fighter when he shaved his head and he wore a mouthpiece and he was the wrestling machine. The character had many evolutions. When you look at somebody like, and this is a great example of a guy that's been a main eventer and has had longevity throughout and is famous for his longevity. When you look at a guy like The Undertaker, how many times has The Undertaker evolved throughout the years? This is going to be a very weird comparison, but The Undertaker is like the Madonna of professional wrestling. He always changes something, he always adds something new, and it kind of keeps us on our toes. And also, if you're a writer or a booker, it gives you more tools to work with. When you look at Sting, that was another guy, beach blonde hair, buzz cut, uh, lovely face paint, beach body, looked like a surfer, evolved and changed his character, added completely new legs to him even though he was already an established main eventer when they did that character evolution and he evolved there was so much more it opened more windows for him and that's my thing randy is unhappy with his spot randy is a guy that can kind of do whatever he wants it's pretty much known and he's even said it you know and it's pretty real randy can do whatever he wants randy is the guy that the company keep pushing all the time keep pushing all the time they've never ever labeled him with some kind of alcatraz cross that they have with cm punk or daniel bryan he's never falls victim to that he can do pretty much what i can imagine he's got enough power where he can actually just say i want to do this feud and they'll take that more into consideration than the average guy with all of that being said why is randy not taking a step back looked at the current Randy Orton package and evolved it and updated it. I'm just saying, when you evolve your character and you add new things to it, it becomes a lot more interesting. He's going to become like Peter Parker in a sense, you know, this is a comic book reference. But as much as I love Spider-Man, I'll be real with you, I don't feel like Peter Parker's evolved very much and that's kind of why I read Ultimate Spider-Man as opposed to The Amazing Spider-Man because at least in The Ultimates there's a character evolution and things are happening. You have to evolve your characters. You have to uh, add more layers to them. Even if it's new attire or just some newer things or, uh, you know, he's stagnant, he's stale. He, you know, as Schleck Daddy said on his show, he's actually become one of the most boring wrestlers in the company. Probably one of the most boring main eventers. And if you're, to be honest with you, yeah. I, he doesn't keep me on my toes. I'm not like watching in suspense to see what he does next. I know what he's going to do next. And it's quite fitting that the most entertaining thing that Randy Orton has done in God knows the last couple of years has nothing to do with what he's done in the ring. It's RKO Vines. Those have been the most entertaining things that man has ever done in the last two years. And that's how I feel. Get that out there. I'm going to stop. Let me know what you think. Do you think the way that they've used Randy Orton is unfair or is Randy Orton his own worst enemy? Is it his conduct and is it really also the fact that the character hasn't evolved? If you agree, let me know. If you disagree, let me know. I want to hear from you. Hopefully no one rings the doorbell in the next few seconds. I'm Buff Been Stuffed. If you haven't already, like, share, comment, tell your friends, tell everyone. Hit that subscribe button. Peace, love you all and I am out.